Hi, my name is James. Today I'm going to show you our new flagship table saw sled and all the things that it can do. Like all crosscut sleds, of course, it does crosscuts very well. But this table saw sled is unique. It's not just a crosscut sled. It's something we've been working on for a little over a year and has a lot of amazing design features and abilities. For example, it will make picture frames. And you're not limited by size. The front fence has a quick disconnect feature, so you can make picture frames with the sides to it as big as you like. And it's extremely accurate. The triangular guide that holds the sections of picture frame in place was cut using the rules of geometry. It wasn't cut with a tape measure or a framing square or a speed square. It's cut so that it's perfect. The resulting angles that this cuts are not accurate to a degree or a tenth of a degree or a hundredth of a degree, they're absolutely perfect. They're spot on 45 degrees. So if you're designing or building an elaborate picture frame, then perfect for the angles is exactly what you want. Another feature that's usually reserved for dedicated miter sleds that we've incorporated into our crosscut sled is the ability to cut miters. Uh, this incorporates a digital angle finder and it cuts also perfect. It cuts to the accuracy of the digital angle finder which is about to the hundredth of a degree. And you can see we check this here against a Kynex stainless steel 45 degree square. This little square is accurate to the thousandth of an inch and it felt spot on. But sometimes you want to cut a miter that's considerably larger uh, than something short. No problem here because the quick disconnect front fence comes off and this removable section of the back fence comes off and you're not limited by length. You can cut a board just as big as you want to pick up and set down on top of your table saw. You can use the clamping system to clamp the board down before you cross cut it. And we have the exact same accuracy here. We're going to cut a 45 degree here and we'll mate these up and check out the accuracy that they produce. But you're not limited to 45. With this miter slide you can cut any angle that you like. If you want to use really long boards though, you are limited to something in between about 0 and 46 degrees. Alright, so we'll take a quick look at this. We'll line these guys up. We'll take a quick look at this up against another Kynex uh, stainless steel square. And now we have a feature that I love and I use a lot actually, uh, and that's the ability to do bevel cuts. Miter cuts are great, and that's pretty unusual, but bevel cuts are fantastic to be able to do on a sled. Normally if you do that, you've kind of ruined your sled, but with the zero clearance inserts that go both ways, you can re easily set this saw up to cut bevel cuts. Anywhere from zero to 45 or whatever bevel cuts your saw will make. Another cool thing with the zero clearance inserts is you just spread them apart a little bit wider and you can cut dados. You could cut rabbits, or you could use the ability to cut dados and rabbits and you can cut a tenon. You can cut a perfect tenon. And that's really handy. Um, if you build tables, and I used to build a lot of tables, it's nice to have a jig that you can quickly make an accurate tenon with. And there's nothing more accurate than, of course, a table saw sled. So some like the tenons like that. Insert them, and some people want shoulders on the top and bottom of that board. Of course, this will do that too. We could readjust the depth a little bit if need be. And simply put it right back up against our stop. That's a homemade stop. I'll show you how to make one of those and save you a ton of money over trying to buy a commercial one. Because you know, might notice you don't even need top track on a sled like this. You build your own stop, and you don't need top, top track, and you've saved like 75 or 80 bucks. And there you go. So we've cut a tenon all the way around. And the cool thing about this is the shoulders are perfect. The shoulders are all exactly in the same plane. So it's going to come perfect against your leg. And then when you're all done with that, of course, it just takes a minute or so to put the table saw sled back together. You just readjust the uh, zero clearance inserts, clean it off. And you're back to table saw sled operation and you can do your cross cutting again. So today we're going to wrap up the build. This is part two. Hopefully you've seen part one. If not, it's on the YouTube channel and I'll put a link to it down below. Uh, we're here. We're going to cut and make a stop lock today. Uh, one of the problems with table saw sleds is they're expensive. The parts for them are expensive. And it's something that every woodworker has to have. If you want to do quality woodworking, you need a table saw sled. 
for most of them, after you buy a top track, which can run 40, 50 bucks, and then a commercial clamp, which could run another 40, you know, after tax and shipping, you've invested almost $100 just in that little component of your sled. Whereas the stop block clamping system that we have here literally just takes two pieces of hardwood and a dollar or two in hardware and a few minutes to build. Works just as good as a commercial system and you don't need a top track or T-track and you don't need to buy a commercial clamp. So right off the bat, you're, you could be saving yourself as much as $100 on the sled. Plus it's cool, you know, something that you make yourself. If you buy one of our sleds, everybody who buys one of ours completed automatically gets an exotic wood stop block. We're going to uh, include that in the uh, in the purchase there. There's a link below if you're interested to see. Uh, go and look at check out the sled on our website. Uh, but the, so the design itself really isn't 100% mine. It's kind of an amalgam of some different designs that I saw. I first saw something similar in Fine Woodworking Magazine probably 15 years ago. And then I, I saw Mike Taylor from Taylor Toolworks also do something similar using a 1-2-3 block. And most recently I saw Matt Outlaw from 731 Woodworks do something also with a 1-2-3 uh, with a, a block. And they're great. Um, this one's wood. It's a lot cheaper than a 123, uh, 1-2-3 stop block. But, you know, you can, you can build it any way you like. I'll show you how we do this one. Okay, so to start with, we have taken our two pieces of hardwood and we've cut them to size. And then we've attached them together with some double-sided tape. That way, anything I do to them, like the drilling here, is kind of one continuous hole all the way through. That'll just make it a little more accurate uh, and, and work a little bit better when it gets uh, attached to the sled. So I've laid out three holes across the top. And actually, it wasn't me. This is Ryan, my daughter, uh, Kavita's boyfriend. He's doing work in the shop with us now. And... Uh, He's having a really good time. But we drill these three holes, just some quarter inch holes, and I put a uh, like a quarter inch by three and a half inch hex head bolt in there. And Ryan has traced around that, and he hasn't done this before, but he is going to chisel it out in order to allow that bolt head to get recessed. So to start with, we'll grab a Forstner or a little bit bigger drill bit and make that uh, a little bit bigger diameter and uh, to get closer to the edges of the flats. Then we'll just take a chisel and we'll chisel that out. Uh, as close as uh, we can, as close as he can there, so that it fits the hex head bolt. And you certainly don't have to be perfect with this. You just want to prevent that bolt from turning. And we're going to even glue it in a little bit. But uh, well, if it fits in just reasonably snug, it's not going to turn. It's not going to tear through the wood. And it doesn't get a ton of pressure anyway. But it looks nice since it's recessed. And that's kind of the idea uh, behind it. And so he's about to test it here and see how well he did. And it's, it's actually pretty good. Not too bad. May not be the neatest mortise, but it's a good place to practice some of your uh, mortising skills there. Next step would just be to sand it down, make it look nice, uh, get rid of the rough edges. And then we went to Home Depot and got a piece of aluminum round bar, quarter inch aluminum round bar. I think it's only about $3 for one of these. It's a quarter by 36 inches. You could make an awful lot of stop blocks with this. Um, but you do need to have one. You may be able to get shorter ones. I think I saw them 12 inches, but they didn't have any when we were in there. 12 inches would just be a couple of bucks. And it'll cut great on the chop saw. Just be very careful when you're cutting it. Make sure the blade comes to a complete stop before you lift it up out of there so you don't accidentally grab that piece and throw it around. And then we want to take that aluminum and sand the roughness off of it. It sands pretty well with a coarse bit of sandpaper and just make it a little bit smooth around the edges so nobody gets nicked or scraped on it. And then we'll assemble the stop block. Here's how it goes. So we put the bolt in most of the way and we're going to get some CA glue in there. We want it to stay in there and stay recessed. This isn't really, uh, glue is not really there for holding force to prevent it from turning. That's the mortise that's going to stop all that. And then he'll, uh, we'll freeze this. This is me doing the assembly. And now we're going to put that aluminum in. I have roughed up the bottom half inch of the aluminum there with the coarse sandpaper. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, this just allows the CA to get a little bit better grip on it. And we're just going to sink that all the way down. You can tap it in if the hole is a little bit tight. But we'll sink that all the way down so it's kind of flush with the, with the other side of that piece of wood. And I've got the exact dimensions in the plans. We also have plans for this, of course. So you can, uh, you can get a set of plans for it. Or like I said, if you want to just buy the sled outright, we'll sell it to you. So we'll see a glue those in there. And that's kind of it. Everything else just fits. So we want to kind of sand it up um, and get most of that CA glue off. We'll sand it all the way around if you want to put a finish on it. This would be a good time to get a finish on it. And just take a few seconds to make it look nice. 
You don't have to go crazy with it. I want to take a second to give a shout out to everybody in our Kingsfine Woodworking community who's really patient with me over the last couple of months to put this thing together. And uh, yeah, there it is. That's the stop block. It's all complete. And it just goes on the fence like this, on the back fence. And you tighten it down, and that's it. Real simple. You loosen it and you slide it wherever you want to lock it down. And we're going to put a tape measure right on the top of the fence. Send the, we'll sand the fence smooth and a tape will stick up there. But that's it. We've just got two stop blocks. And I might have skipped a section of the assembly. This one's purple heart, so if you get one of our sleds, you don't know what kind of exotic you'll get, but you'll get something cool. And remember, these two get glued in so they don't go anywhere. And this is the moving por portion of the stop block. It'll go in and out. And then the uh, star knob will just kind of lock it in place. And that's it. It's that easy. Really, really easy design. You no longer need T-Track up top. You don't need top track. You don't have to buy a commercial clamp. This will hold rock solid. And it looks really nice. So I want to do one more thing to it to make it a, a precision stop block. I'm going to mark a location for holes on either side. We're using a 3 8 inch drill bit here. Well, actually, sorry, it's a 5 16 inch drill bit because I'm going to thread those holes with a 3 8 inch bit or uh, with a 3 8 inch uh, uh, thread or wood threading wood threading tap and you can just a regular tap will work these are like the wood whisperer um, thread taps yeah, they work great because you can just put them in your drill and tap it and it just makes a really good high quality tap and it's so simple you can actually just thread the screw in now so this is a 3 8 by 16 screw which means it has 16 threads per inch so one complete revolution of this machine screw this bolt here is makes the the bolt go in by one sixteenth of an inch so one full revolution makes the bolt go in by one sixteenth of an inch and this is one way that we can get really precision woodworking this bolt is a little long i do have shorter ones that actually go out with the sleds but once you put it in all the way or a little bit just about all the way i just make a mark like this on the face of it and kind of at the top and uh, we'll just whenever we start we'll just kind of start with that right at the very top i know it's not quite at the top there but we'll put one on the other side and we'll do the same thing with that. And this way the stop block will be, uh, it'll, we'll have very uh, good incremental positioning on both sides of the fence. So check it out, stop block is now micro adjust. So with that facing straight up, if we were to turn it one full revolution, that's going to push the wood away from the stop by exactly a sixteenth of an inch. If we go half a res revolution, I wasn't quite half there. It's going to move it out by a 32nd. Quarter of a revolution by a 64th and an eighth of a revolution by a 128th. Far more accurate than you ever need to be. And it's on both sides, so it works on both sides of the fence. And that's it. That's all you need to have a high precision micro adjusting stop block. It's all built into the technology of that simple little bolt, the 16 threads per inch bolt. That's all that matters. And so while it's in place, you make your little cut, and if you realize it's not quite right, you can just move the screw a tiny bit and cut it again, and that'll incrementally move the screw over, or incrementally move your wood over, to get exactly what you're looking for. With the stop block done, let's turn our attention to the picture frame attachment. The picture frame attachment is exceedingly simple. It's just a triangle. However, it does have to be a precision triangle. We need it far more accurate uh, than, say, for example, a big framing square, which is a really common piece of uh, equipment that a lot of people used to make their uh, to make their their, their picture frame jigs. Uh, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be out of the ordinary for uh, a framing square to be off by a degree uh, or even two in some instances. So we're going to use the rules of geometry to make this absolutely perfect. We're going to start by cutting two perfect squares. I think I picked seven and a half inch squares because it fits nicely with the saw and how everything goes together and you'll need to do something that's about the same. There'll be detailed uh, instructions of course how to do this uh, in the plan. And I'm going to remove that fence because now I need to make a bigger square, something that's bigger than this sled. Uh, so that's the nice thing about this this particular 
table saw sled is I'm not limited to what I can cross cut by the gap between the fences. We just uh, use that quick release uh, uh, front fence and we can put really big stock in there, which is really handy for cabinet work. Uh, I don't have to lug around a great big gigantic heavy sled. I could just you know, put it on here, take that fence off and make perfect cross cuts on pieces much, much larger than I could ordinarily. And I wanted to mention, we got a lot of questions after the first video. People were asking, does the picture frame part come with the sled if I buy the pre-built sled? Or does the does the miter function with the digital angle finder come with the sled? Or, or what do I need to buy? You don't have to buy anything. Every single thing is part of the sled if you were to buy the, the sled from us. Uh, it includes the digital angle finder, all the hardware, all the attachments, the the uh, T-track, the, the miter bars, the bolts, the screws, uh, a pre-made stop clamp. Uh, stop block. Everything is there. It's 100%. You don't need to buy a single thing for it if you if you get it from us. All right, so here we go. We're going to take these two little squares and we're going to line them up perfectly on one corner of the big square. If you saw my older uh, table saw video, table saw sled video, you might remember this. So this is very similar. I'm going to just tape that in place so it doesn't move, but it's perfectly aligned to the edge of the big square. And then I'll tape this one right next to it. And it's also now perfectly aligned along the edge of the square. And then we'll just run a little piece here. I am going to do some cutting in a moment so it doesn't have to be fully taped down there. I just want to make sure this holds nice and snug. So now if I take this piece off that I put on, it's identical to the square that is remaining on the big square. So it's identical to the other square. So if I turn this now and line up this edge with those two corner points, then I now have uh, the geometry of a perfect 45 degree angle. And that's just done by rotating it uh, and putting it to these two points. So that's a perfect 45 degree angle. It's far better than what you could make by just grabbing uh, a tool and drawing a line. And we're going to use this to uh, this whole sit up system in order to cut this triangle and it's going to be perfect. And when I was done I actually mated this with a triangle that I cut on the CNC machine uh, which if you get a sled made from us I will confess that all of the parts are cut on the CNC machine. Okay so what I'm doing here is I have uh, I've, I've double sided tape taped a straight edge to my fence so I have a longer stretch of fence and I have put some tape down and I'm gluing on that little board there, a little straight edge board. This just gives me more contact surface against my fence now because I'm going to slice this on the table saw. And you can tell that I'm going to cut corner to corner on that big piece of plywood because the other two small corners are touching my fence. So it's cutting a perfect 45-45-90 triangle. And there's no tool in the shop that you could buy that could measure uh, this and show that it was off by any amount. Not even a thousandth of a degree, probably. I'm sure the wood would, would swell and expand and contract enough that you could see some error but uh, over time. But that's it's really simple to make. You don't have to do anything complicated. You make three squares, two little ones and a big one. And then just use your, your table saw fence and cut it. And that's it. That's a perfect triangle. And that's our picture frame triangle. It's really that simple. It's not that hard to do. We could check it if we want with a uh, uh, with a framing square. Um, the framing square isn't going to show anything because it's not as accurate as the wooden triangle that we just made. But it does match up pretty well. And I've never really dropped that framing square, so I think it's pretty accurate. I do want to get an approximate line down the middle there. This is going to help me do some alignment because I do have to attach a ruler uh, to this triangle as sort of a measuring system. And now I'm marking some hole locations. I'm marking like four inches up from the bottom. I think it's four inches. Uh, and I'm uh, drawing a straight line across there because I've got to drill a couple of holes in order to uh, have this secure to the T-track on the sled. We don't want this triangle to move once I attach it to the sled. And these don't have to be dead on. They just got to be in, in the right spot so that you know I can, I can set up a T-bolt from the T-track and use some star knobs and just hold this down to the sled. So that's pretty simple. And I know my uh, T-track on my sled is 12 and a half inches apart, so that's why I created the center line. And I'm going a you know, certain distance out 
on each side in order to establish the uh, the correct distance for those holes. So you can drill that with a drill if you have a uh, a drill press. You know, I'd probably drill them on a drill press to be a little more accurate. I'm going to drill a perfect quarter inch hole because I don't want much play in those. I want the, the bolt to fit snugly on those. And if you were to um, buy our paper templates, we do have paper templates available for sale. You know, the paper templates, of course, come with the pattern. And I'm just going to throw this up here for you to see it. And I'll just show you that uh, that lines up perfectly with the pattern that we have. So you could, if you get this, you could actually trace it and cut it that way. Um, pretty simple. So temporarily I was screwing the uh, this removable section here in with a screw until these knobs came in. Of course if you get a sled from us it does come with these knobs. It's just a, a little bit quicker of a way to remove this section of fence. In, in the preview you saw me use one of those knobs but now I have them in stock for all the sleds. And that's it. So a couple of uh, T-bolts and some star knobs locks that triangle down. So that triangle is really the real, the whole deal. That's everything for this sled. All right, so I'm going to go through a, a little bit of procedure here in order to get the ruler lined up right because I want to take an accurate measurement. So if I want to make like an 8x10 picture frame, I want to know that my numbers are accurate. And I know I'm going to have to make a cut here to remove a portion of this. So I'm going to butt this up nice and tight to the edge. I'm just kind of using that to butt it up to the edge to show where it needs to go. I'm just going to uh, make um, uh, the location, mark the locations of where this is. Now, if you were to get this on your own and not buy our sled, for example, you'll need to get a quality ruler. This is actually a two-inch wide ruler that's one-eighth of an inch thick, so it's very heavy duty. It's a good idea to get the heaviest duty that you can. You just have drawn a pencil line there that kind of roughly shows where that cut has to happen. And I want to actually make that cut right to the very peak. I'm just kind of drawing that as a reference to show me the angle that I want to cut, but I want to cut it to the very peak, right to the corner. And the waist is on the, the, the side where I just drew the arrow. That'll just make it more accurate. So if I make an 8 by 10 picture frame, it's you know not off by eighth of an inch or sixteenth of an inch. It's going to be perfect. So we'll dial that over and we'll just make sure the blade comes down right on that very corner. We'll leave the very corner. And here again, if you're a tiny bit off, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know how picture frames work? They kind of um, extend past the, the picture a little bit. So if your picture frame is a sixteenth of an inch bigger than uh, you know than your photograph, it doesn't matter. The edges of the photograph are still hidden behind the walls of the frame anyway. But I like to make it accurate. So we'll put that back in there. And you see I've left the entire corner intact right to the very peak. We'll put that there to stop it. And we'll see if you can follow along with the, the procedure that I'm kind of doing now. Because I've got to get that ruler to move off the edge of the triangle so that I can clamp onto it with a little clamp block, a stop block that we're making for that. But I need it to come right down the dead center of my triangle at the same time. So I'm going to take my straight edge here, which I know is not perfect, but this allows me to slide the ruler up. And by sliding the ruler up the edge of that, I'm naturally moving the ruler away from the triangle on the right side. And that's what I want. We're keeping the ruler in line where it goes, but I'm moving it off the edge of the triangle. I hope that makes sense. All right, so I'm going to take some plywood here. This is actually three quarter inch plywood. Uh, you could use a piece of solid hardwood here too. It doesn't make any difference. This is going to be the stop block for the picture frame. Basically, it's a three inch by five inch rectangle that has a 45 degree angle chopped off of one side of it. And then we're going to make a groove right down the middle of it because it's got to fit over our ruler. It's going to be our stop block for measuring frames. I made a little mark on a piece of the same plywood that I made that triangle from, which is just 3 8 inch plywood, and that's the exact distance I want from the fence, because that's where I want the groove to be, because I want this to fit flat on the triangle, and then I want the groove to be here to fit, uh, fit this over the ruler. Now we can fine tune the adjustment a little bit if we need to.
not a big deal. And then we're going to take and test it. That looks pretty good, just in any old piece of scrap. We're going to check the depth there to get it exact. The depth, the depth is important. I want that depth to match uh, the triangle. And I also wanted to make sure that it fit that ruler. So it's the piece of my cutoff from the ruler, and it actually fits nice and snug in there. It's perfect. If it didn't, I might need a thinner curved blade and have to take a couple of cuts. But that's one of the reasons why I got a 1 inch thick ruler, because it makes this really easy. And then we're going to cut the dado here. The groove, you can cut that any way you like. You can do it on your router, you can do it on your saw. Take whatever safety precautions that you need to make that a safe cut. The blade does stick up just a small amount. And this is how it works. So it's going to go over the ruler, which sits on top of the triangle. And this will slide up and down to allow us to measure it. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of locating where exactly this framing square fits over here when that edge of it lines up perfectly with the peak. So I'm going to move it into the peak. And I'm just going to draw a couple of lines because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some tape down, some painter's tape down on my uh, picture frame triangle and some painter's tape down on the bottom of this framing square because I'm going to temporarily glue this onto the picture frame triangle. So it's a little tedious, takes a, you know, a good minute or two to set this up, but that's important because it's going to allow the, the ruler, which is our measuring device, and more importantly, it's the mating edge for the edge of the picture frame piece that's going to be cut. So it needs to be equidistant from the picture frame triangle at all times. It can't be flush and touching it. It's got to stick out because that's how the clamping system works. The clamp has to grab it on the top and the bottom, so it has to stick out, but it has to stick out the exact same amount all the way. And don't worry if it sounds confusing, it'll all make perfect sense in just a minute. Okay, so check it out. We have to have the end of the ruler come right to the peak, but it has to be away from the triangle. So the way to do that is to move it straight forward, exactly straight forward. And that's what the blue framing square is for. It allows us to move it exactly straight forward which moves it off of the picture frame triangle. Now it's gotta be the same on both sides, that's what we're talking about. You gotta keep that perfect 45, so we're gonna feel it to the bottom of the dado and make sure it's touching perfectly all the way across there. If we do that, we know we've done it right. And then we're gonna tape that down and we'll check it. The reason we're taping it is because we need it fixed in place so that we can screw it in place. If you order the sled from us, the picture frame and the, and the ruler, the picture and triangle and the ruler will not be attached. I'll mate them, I'll mount them, it'll be perfect, but we'll have to detach them for shipping. I can't really get a box big enough that's going to ship these two pieces as one unit pre-attached, but not to worry, they will come back together perfectly. I've done it a dozen times, we've tested it, there's no problems with it. In fact, we're going to take this one off in order to trim the ruler down a little bit and put it back on, and we'll test it again. It comes together perfectly every time. Then I'm going to measure every two to three inches uh, down the ruler or four inches down this ruler. I want to get four or five screws in it uh, to hold it securely to the plywood. So we'll start by drilling a hole in the ruler only that's about the diameter of the outside of the screw that we're using. I'm going to use a number six by three eighths inch long screw. So for sure it's not going to poke through the bottom of that three eighths inch plywood. And then we're going to follow up with a countersink. I'll put a link to all these things in the description in the event that you need something like this and you don't already have it. So we want the countersink bit to be big enough so that the screw is flush with the top of the ruler. Or at least really close. Nothing's really going to ride over the top of it, but it's a nice neat tight look if it's set up that way. If it's a little below the surface, that's fine. There's the screw. Oh, I was wrong. Sorry. Sorry. It's, um, it's number six by seven sixteenths, so it's a tiny bit longer than three eighths. All right, and that's it. And then we're gonna screw these down all the way across here. I always like to do when I'm doing a, a system like this is get one in the middle first and screw it, and then I can get some of the other holes in and uh, and screw those down too. But that first one kind of helps anchor everything in place and keep it just a little more solid for the remainder of the drilling. And before I continue, I'd like to vacuum up all of these metal chips. I don't want them around my saw stop. And if we're satisfied with that, and that looks pretty good to me, then we have to take this uh, 
ruler here, since I have a saw stop, and chop a little bit of this off. It's already in the perfect spot, so we know it's going to measure correctly all the way down, so we don't need the very tip of it there. So I marked it roughly with that red pin to show about where I'm going to chop it, and then we'll unscrew it. This is what I was talking about. We can take it off and put it back on, and we'll just take it over to the chop saw and we'll chop that bit off. It doesn't matter really how much you take off. You know, if you just take off a tiny bit, it won't really come into contact with the blade, and you'll be fine. If you don't have a saw stop, it probably doesn't make any difference. Um, I always kind of trimmed them back anyway, even when I didn't have a saw stop. That just kind of gets rid of the uh, gets rid of the the rough edges there because the, the saw blade will occasionally touch it a little bit and it just becomes sharp and becomes a hassle. So it's a little bit neater if it stays away from the saw blade. Then I'm going to file it a little bit so that it's smooth to the touch. I don't want anything sharp that can cut me. And we're going to put it back in place. You see we're mating the holes back in and the, the best technique to do this I have found is to put all the screws in part way. Don't sink them yet. Just get them all in part way and that helps get the alignment back perfect. And once you have them all in part way, you can follow up and sync them. And we'll check it with the stop block, but I'm sure it'll be perfect. This is in fact how you make any picture frame sled, really. I've been making picture frame sleds, I think, since I saw them in fine woodworking that are something similar to this. Uh, back in the late 80s or early 90s, it's been a really long time. Next, we're going to install the uh, toggle clamp. The toggle clamp is what's going to lock this uh, stop onto the ruler, just like a little friction stop. I'm going to mark the holes. And then we'll just drill them and drive them home. I'm going to use a cabinet screw here. I could use a countersink screw, but I've got these sitting here on my shelf and I don't use them too much anymore, so I'm going to kind of get rid of these. But any screw here would work fine. These just have a nice big grip, kind of like a washer on top there, and they'll hold it nice and snug. If you get a small toggle clamp like this, you will have to make sure that the foot of the toggle clamp goes all the way down in order to make contact with the ruler. And so this is how it works. You put it in place, it slides over that ruler, of course, and you just move it to the right position and then lock the toggle clamp down. It's as simple as that. It's a 200 pound toggle clamp, so it's pretty strong. It's not going to go anywhere, but you know, it's not rock solid, so you really can't slam the picture frame parts against it when you're doing it, but, uh, but it'll work great. That's it. And so that wraps up the picture frame portion of the build. All right, so next we are going to build the section of the sled that allows you to make miter cuts. This build is very straightforward. We're just going to use a piece of the 3 8 inch plywood. It's got to be specific dimensions in order for us to maximize the miter angle that we can get. And then we will have to drill a hole in it. Uh, once we get it shape, we'll also need to cut the corner off just a little bit in order for the digital angle finder to work nicely there. And we'll put a hole in it at the right spot. And this will allow it to attach to the sled so that we get consistent results with our cutting. So it'll basically go in here like this, and then the miter will go on top. We'll lock this down, and we can make our cuts. That test fit looks nice. Next step is to install the digital angle finder. And of course, if you buy the sled from us, it comes pre-installed. Everything's all done for you. I'll put a link in the description below for some of these digital angle finders. There's about three or four that all work perfectly. Um, they are the same function. Uh, they're very, very similar in make. I, th I think they might even be made by the same company. Uh, we just we basically want to show in there is we want it to line up right to the edge of this piece of plywood. So I'm going to put some double-sided tape to hold it in place. And then I've got a kind of a board uh, butted up against the plywood. That way when I set this angle finder in place, I can also butt it up against the plywood. And that's going to keep the, the angle reading true. So when we zero it before we make our first cut, then of course once we uh, make any adjustment to the bevel, to the angle there, um, it'll measure accurately. And we'll screw it in. You, we, if you go and buy this and do this yourself, you will have to drill and countersink these. Uh, you can do it on the drill press, or you could just do it by hand. 
just a regular drill bit works. Um, the steel is not hardened steel in any of these, so it drills through pretty easily. Uh, once you have it drilled, you will need to countersink it. And the countersink is important because we want the screw to be flush because this digital angle finder has to open and close nicely. So I'll put a little bit of tape on the top because we're going to have a board that goes on the top of that. And we changed the battery from the side over there on the black plastic so you can, you can always have access to change the battery, no problem. And I'm going to hold this up against the edge because the board that I put on top, I want it to be perfectly flush with the front edge of that gauge. And all of these steps just ensure that the, um, the zero mark on the miter gauge is in fact true zero relative to the sled fence. And of course that will make it true 90 relative to the blade. And then we'll screw it in. We'll just leave the tape there permanently, but we'll screw it together. And that's that's pretty simple. That's it. That's all there is to that. It's screwed down to the base and that's screwed together. Now we want to put a little block in front. And this block in front is what's going to butt up against our plywood. So CA glue is really all you need. This is never under any pressure. Now a miter gauge like this, this is not something that you, if you're going to make production miter cuts, something much more serious, uh, you're going to need a better miter gauge than this, a better system than this. Like the Inker Miter 5000, I have that. Unfortunately, it just does one thing, miters, but it does miters very well. So if you're going to be cutting miters all day long, you're going to want to go something a little more industrial, a little more heavy duty. But if you just occasionally need a 30 degree angle on something or a 42 degree angle on something, this is far more accurate than a chop saw. Much easier, much nicer cut, and it's 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 just the way to go. It's more accurate. But if you're if, here again, uh, it's also faster to set up. But if you need to be cutting all day long, big long heavy boards, then you're going to want to probably go with something you know more dedicated to that purpose. Unfortunately, uh, building a sled like this is sort of a uh, a design compromise. You have to make lots of compromises in order to get lots of functions into the sled. One or two of those functions might not be optimal for, say, production work. And, and that's what this is here. Although, as you can see from this gauge here, of course, it cuts very, very accurately. And that's just no modification, just by keeping those, uh, keeping all those edges square that we lined up when we screwed the miter gauge onto the piece of plywood. So next and last we are going to cut out for the dado. And you see I have the zero clearance inserts moved all the way out of the way. We'll butt them up to the dado when it comes time. Now this will work for a table saw that tilts left or right. And you can see it's on that side because this table saw, my saw, tilts left. If you had a right tilting saw you would be slicing out the other side. That's just how it's configured to work. But once we have the dado there we can slide the uh, zero clearance inserts right over to it. You want to make sure you're butting it to the teeth, to the carbide teeth, not to the body of the blade. Uh, otherwise you'll just, you know, keep trimming away at your inserts until they get too small. Um, if that does happen, it's not really a big deal. Uh, some people prefer to do that in order to make sure they absolutely have zero clearance. Um, and if you do and you trim them away after, you know, a couple of months of use, it's no big deal. You can make another set. If you, even if you buy the sled from us, I'll give you the plans, uh, the exact dimensions and measurements to make yourself another set with. We even sell the sets on our website, so you can you can pick up a set. You don't have to make them, but they're, they're not too hard to make. And that's, that's really it. That is the um, dado function. Once the dado function is done, of course, it's very easy to just put the sled back together. And that really concludes all of the special builds to put all of the various jigs together that this sled features. I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.